Hello everyone, it's Jake from Fife Paranormal and I'm at a very familiar place. This is a uh, pres on Old Presbyterian Church here in Rockridge County, Virginia. If you've been following the channel for a while then you, this place might look familiar. I've been here about four or five times investigating, doing photo shoots, stuff like that. And you're probably wondering why I'm here. Well, in the past I really haven't gotten a lot of activity here. I think over the course of my four or five investigations I've maybe gotten one spare box response. But a few weeks ago, one of my old friends contacted me and he told me that him and his mom were out here visiting some family graves. And he said that they kind of got the feeling they were being watched. They were here in the evening time just before it got dark and they were up in one of the upper sections of the cemetery. And he said something told him to look down towards the old section, which would be right around here. So as they looked down, both of them told me separately that they saw what looked like a tall black figure almost looked like it had a cloak on but it appeared to be headless or completely rounded off at the top and they said that it seemed to be gliding up the hill towards these doors as if it was trying to get into the church now my friend said that as they saw this thing they were frozen they couldn't say anything he said he doesn't remember thinking anything he said he just remembers the air felt very calm and he said there was just it was just unnatural the way he felt, the way the environment felt, and he said they never made a noise. It tried to get to these steps where I'm sitting now, and it just vanished. And he said that his mom ended up telling him that that night she actually had a nightmare about that creature. Now, I've done a lot of research on this place, and I have never run across any claims of a headless figure, especially one in a cloak gliding around the cemetery. Most of it is just people see or hear, feel things, but nothing to that degree. So that begs the question, what is this thing and why did it suddenly appear? Well, on today's episode of The Five Files, I'm here to try and answer that question. So before we lose daylight, I'm going to see if I can find who the cloaked figure of the church is. So I'm in one of the sections of the cemetery where there are Civil War soldiers buried. And when I was initially doing my research for this location, this was actually the area with the most reported sightings of paranormal activity. People were seeing shadow figures duck behind these tombstones. People were hearing strange sounds. And I think to kind of get the ball rolling, this would be a good place to start the investigation. So I'm about to begin my very first spirit box session here at the Old Presbyterian Church. Scanning is always at 100 milliseconds on forward sweep. Hopefully we'll get something. All right, hello, is there anyone here with us today? My name's Jake, and I would like to uh, talk to any spirits or anyone that might be hanging around the graveyard. If anyone's here and they can hear me, can they please say hello? This is a very beautiful graveyard. Do you like being here? here a few times over the past few years. Do you remember me being here? I'm not really feeling anything yet, but sometimes for locations like this, it takes it a few minutes to kind of warm up. Are there any soldiers here? It's kind of weird. 
good that there's also no radio bleed through. Well, I'm gonna end the session here a little bit and move somewhere else. Do you have anything to say before I turn off the spear box? So not really anything there. Um, I'm still not feeling anything, which like I said, that's that's not a surprise to me. For places like this that don't have a lot of reported paranormal activity, it can take sometimes five minutes. It can take an hour for it to warm up if you're gonna get anything at all. So what we'll probably do is we'll move a little further up or we've had a bit more success. And then probably to end it, we'll go down to the front end of the church where the cloaked figure was seen. So we shall see what happens. That could have been just my eyes playing to tricks me, but I saw something. Hmm, weird. So where we are standing right now is close to the top of the cemetery. I'm going to assume that this is about where they were, they might have been a little further up. So if they saw something towards the front, I'm going to guess they're talking about the back area where you see those tombstones behind my car. So for them to have seen something, it would have had to have been probably, depending on how fast the figure was gliding, probably a four or five second encounter, unless they were a bit further down this way. A bit further down this way they would have had a better view of the door because here if you look very closely you can't really see the door all too well it is blocked by a tree and there is a possibility that the swaying flags could have given the impression of something moving maybe they could have seen a crow a blackbird or something like that because in order to get a good view of where the figure would have been they would have had to probably been a bit down that way which is not close to the top and trust me i've been to the cemetery or graveyard many many times so my guess is they were probably standing in this little area here and they probably saw the figure in between where my car is and where you see those tombstones in the back so they probably saw the figure as it was coming up the hill and they saw it go across the road and then went behind the trees and they assumed it was going into the church. So you're talking about if it's going slow, maybe a four to six second encounter. If it's going fast, you're talking about a one to three, one to four full second encounter, which is still really, really good for the paranormal. I mean, most stuff we see is like a tenth of a second, half a second at most. So that's still really, really impressive. But the idea of making out details, it, it does seem a little hazy right here. So I'm gonna step in front of the camera real quick. If I'm standing up here and you know, I'm frozen completely. If my mind is sharp and it's laser focused to this figure, I probably could pick out you know certain details on it also depends on uh, you know what time of day there's you know if you pan the camera real quick there is sun but it's behind some class it does mess with lighting a little bit um, you know in terms of determining height it would be a little difficult to uh, they didn't give me you know an estimate they just said it looks like a person so I'm guessing between probably 5 8 and 6 2 that's just a rough guess 
so I'm not going to discount their experience. I would just need a bit more information from them before I'm able to really determine what they saw or not. Because when you're here at a church, you think of, you know, like ghost monks or, you know, stuff like that, people in robes and stuff like that. And, you know, in terms of the headlessness, you know, it could have been like a child figure who, you know, was like slumping around just a little bit and that might have given the impression it was headless. You know, maybe it was at a lower angle and they just didn't see the head too well. Maybe it blended in. So there, there are so many explanations that you could come up with for what they saw. And because I've been here so many times, I've seen the light do different things. I have seen people down there before. It is very, very difficult to pick out singular details like, you know, shirt collar, what kind of clothes they're wearing, height, that kind of stuff. So that's what makes stuff like this very interesting to me. And sometimes it can be... It can be a little disheartening when you have so much information, you have so many questions about not just the history, but the hauntings, but an experience that your friend had and his mom had, and they're looking for answers. And you see, you go here, you try to ask those questions and you don't get a response. So that's the nature of the paranormal sometimes. But in terms of determining exactly what they saw, I believe they saw something, you know, in terms of what it was, I don't know. It does seem like they had a lot of really good information to just kind of be making it up. Um, I mean, it is possible they saw a bird, but the fact that it took that particular flight path and was big enough for them to mistake it as a person, I don't really buy that. So we've rolled out bird, we've rolled out UFOs, and we've rolled out weather balloons. So I'm about all of all out explanations here. So I'm gonna do one more spirit box session. I'm actually gonna go down towards the top area, which is where they first saw the creature or the figure. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get some answers then. I still haven't felt anything, haven't heard anything. Aside from seeing the figure behind the tombstone, there's really nothing that's happened here. So I'm gonna grab our stuff and uh, we'll head on down there. Nope. Why is it that some people report certain paranormal activity, but other people don't? Well, there are a lot of different factors that can come down to the person's own energy, the time of day, what's going on at that location, and even the location's energy. Some people are more at, more open, I should say, to paranormal activity than others. So, you know, one person might have, you know, some sort of ability where they can detect everything going on, and so they'll see and hear and feel a lot. While another person, they might be a little open to it, but not that open, and they might see one or two things. And sometimes your openness to the paranormal, it, it could open and close. Think of it almost as a door. And for a place like this, where there's a lot of people, usually when people up here, they aren't thinking about the paranormal. Now, this time of year, because it's getting close to Halloween, you know, people are getting in that paranormal mindset. And so sometimes people go to graveyards and cemeteries like this, and they start looking for stuff. And sometimes that's when your eyes and your senses can play tricks on you. You think you see a shadow figure, but it was actually a squirrel or you know a leaf or something like that. And so it's always important as paranormal investigators or anyone just out and about to always keep your wits about you. If you think you see, hear, or feel anything, just stop, double, te double check, take a few deep breaths. And then if the spirits want to be known to you, then they will make themselves known to you. So the fact that we really haven't gotten anything here at this graveyard honestly doesn't surprise me, but it does leave me with a few more questions as to why some friends of mine saw a floating cloaked figure and I didn't. This is a little strange. All right, so this is roughly the area where they first saw the figure. They said it was walking up around here and they guessed it made a turn and try to go inside the church. So, because this is the spot where they had the best view of it, I figured I'd do the session here. So, that's the luck to us. Let's see what we get. All right, hello, is there anyone here with us today? My name's Jake and 
I'm here because a friend of mine and his mom said that they saw a cloaked figure trying to get into the church. Does anyone know who that could have been? What did it say? It sounded like it said the woman. Who's the woman? Is she the one who was the cloaked figure that day? Like I said earlier, we're not here to hurt you. My friend was just a little scared the last time he was here and we were trying to get answers for him. Can you help us out? confirmation yes or no did my friend see a cloaked figure in this part of the cemetery yes or no spirit box session it did sound like that one voice said the woman but it kind of had a like a southern pronunciation of wool and man so I can't wait to clean that piece of audio up see what we got but it's a very peaceful cemetery and as our cameraman was saying as we were walking down here this this area had a bit more of an ominous feel than when we were here early but that's probably because the lighting isn't as good and there was less traffic on the interstate here so that probably played a part in it. Um, as for what my friend and his mom saw that day, unfortunately, we weren't able to get the answer, but maybe by going back and listening to the audio recordings, we'll have an EVP or spirit box voice I missed, and hopefully we'll be able to get them answers. So thank you all for tuning into this episode of The Five Files, episode two. I really hope you all enjoyed it. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like, as always. And if you have any thoughts, questions, theories as to what my friend saw, please leave a comment below. You know, we'd be very happy to hear any and all theories. And I'm sure my friend would really like to hear any and all theories because he said his mom did have a nightmare about it, so it must be weighing somewhat heavy on her mind. So, from Jake, I'm Fife Paranormal. Actually, <laughs> it's a little late. From Fife Paranormal, I'm Jake. Hope you have a good day, Russ. Hope you have a good day, everyone. <laughs>